Hey Legionnaires, we are back in the American Civil War with the American Civil War mod for Napoleon Total War. We have another historical battle for you today, another historical scenario, uh, one of these preset scenarios that you can get when you uh, play the uh, ACW mod. It is the Battle of Franklin's. So this is fought in 1864. It's a Union victory um, against obviously the Confederates, the only two sides in the American Civil War. But yeah, it's a fairly interesting battle. It's a battle fought in Tennessee. Um, um, between the Army of Ohio, led by John Schofield, against uh, the Army of Tennessee, led by uh, John Bell Hood. So, a battle of two Johns in uh, this one. And it looks like, I don't really know much about this battle. I, um, like I said, my knowledge of the American Civil War, I've seen all these uh, battles, is pretty limited. But uh, yeah, Battle of Franklin, I've never heard, heard of it before. Um, it does look at those as a, it's an offensive uh, attack by the Army of Tennessee on a uh, on a position here held by the Union, uh, like the Union position. It looks like it's a, a trench, couple multiple trench lines here. We've got artillery already set up, <laughs> trench lines as well, which looks awesome. Uh, it really, really does. I mean, look at the map. You can see like what uh, the Confederates got to go through here uh, is a, a multiple lines of defense here, and uh, we have actually some supporting artillery all the way back there as well. Artillery in. Uh, in this mod is insanely important and already I can see early on it looks like the Confederates are losing some of theirs or is that a general actually being routed? Yeah, 12-man unit on horseback, that's probably a general. I don't think the generals died, I think he just routed them. That's a huge loss. I don't know if the players did that on purpose or whether that was just an accident. But yeah, that is a massive, massive uh, like negative and loss already for the Confederates. Usually most armies have multiple generals. Um, I can see at least another two here. So um, it's not the end of the world, but losing a general is not a good start to any old, any battle. Any Total War player will tell you that. But yeah, this uh, this battle has like six infantry divisions from the Confederates attacking, um, like, and it's made up of like 18 brigades, 100 regiments. It seems like yeah, it's incredible. I mean, both sides have about 27,000 men, so both evenly matched. So I mean, attacking on them, um, like attacking. A defensive position while having like similar numbers seems like it's a bad idea to be honest for the uh, for the Confederates in this uh, case. Maybe they just didn't realize that it's all the scale of the defense. I'm not really sure. Someone could probably tell me about the history of this battle a lot better. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's, a, it's a pretty it's a pretty big one. It's, uh, like after it, there is the um, the Battle of Nashville, which apparently is um, like another major another major battle. But like I said, I do not know the knowledge of these battles enough. But I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, if you want to get, uh, get yourselves a drink, get yourselves some snacks, get yourselves some drinks, now is the time, because we are preparing, it seems, as the Confederates are marching on board. And they'll be very much in range very soon, I imagine. They'll, you'll start to see these troops start to drop. Funnily enough, this unit, uh, this uh, game, doesn't seem like there's a lot of large units. A lot of units numbering more like around the size of 100. Uh, like, in this mod, there are units that are like, I mean, we've got like 50-man units out here. I mean, they may have like sappers or something like that, I think. Or, I don't know. Um, it's, it's a shame to tell you what the uh, unit name is and stuff like that. Maybe they just don't even, even have one. It is quite possible. They are just like militia. But um, but yeah, it, it's like some of the units in this mod, like number, I mean, I've seen as high as 800. But yeah, you typically like saw like 400, 300. Um, so yeah, these are actually quite small units in comparison. It's the same for the union in this one. It seems like most of their units are numbering around about 160, something like that. And they are already men are breaking. <laughs> That is not a good start there. I think it's just artillery bombarding these guys. Doing a lot of morale damage here. Union defenses are pretty substantial over here. You can see there's a gun battery already set up and they are doing some serious damage. That is for sure. I don't know actually. Looking at it, I mean, X's are like identifiers of artillery. It doesn't look like the Confederates have any, any artillery. And apparently, I think. If I remember correctly, um, Johnny, who was playing in this one, usually is playing uh, a lot of NCW3, but he's doing so much. And at ACW, apparently, a lot of these uh, Confederate units don't have ammunition. Um, if I remember correctly, so these units are not even equipped with ammo. So these guys are just going to go straight into melee. Uh, luckily, it seems that these Confederate troops have uh, issue with ammunition. So that's a really cool thing. I did not realize that you could add. That you could add it with the. Uh, with the mod, is that you can actually get rid of ammunition. As you can hear here, the, uh, the shots already going off. They are already blasting away, trying to do it. The Yankees here, fighting for the, uh, the Stars and Stripes. They're preparing, as you can see, I mean, 
looks like it, like again the Confederate is taking some ammunition, but uh, yeah, it does not look like everyone will be taking ammunition. We'll see what happens. How much meleeing there is going on, but you can see, I think it might be the mass in the middle here, blocking any ammo. The flanks are going to just pin down the attack, like the defenders, with their with some uh, cover fire, and it looks like the machines here are going to get sent in and just uh, with no, no uh, ammo. Just a, just a rifle and a bayonet. To be honest, they're about as useless as Piper here. He's piping away. But yeah, if you haven't checked out the ACW mod and you're a big fan of like the period, Your men have been and you're like, oh, I should definitely give this go, I'll leave a link for it in the description if you haven't checked out. There's also a Discord as well, you're welcome to. Uh, check that out there. They do lots of regular games there, it seems. So another Jedi's uh, routing here. It's a big problem with Jedi's I found in this mod is that you get shot quite easily by small arms fire. Uh, it could actually be a big, big problem. That one might return though. 10 out of 12. More men coming forward here for the Union Army. So where there's more, I don't know. There's no real space for them. Looking at the defenses here. The general still not returned. But the artillery here also is Chevron to hell. I mean, it's only two man battery, but yeah, these guys actually. Uh, we already got three chevrons. Whether that's like, I think that might be issued. Those are mostly our three here, all those three chevrons. Unlikely we all earn the same amount. Um, but yeah, we've got some bigger batteries back here as well, which are uh, definitely going to be of use. But yeah, look at this. Confederates are getting very, very close. And it looks like, yeah, these are the sensors of the horse here has no ammo, and this is going to go straight on in. Here we go. The boys with no ammunition have been sent in, and will they be able to break through the Union lines? We will see. Charge him, boys. I don't know what a war cry would be for the Confederates, but I don't know if I want to repeat it. And there you go, they've broken the Confederate line, uh, sorry, the Union line pretty easy. And yeah, the Union forces are already retreating, they just do not want to be anywhere near the, the melee line. They're probably working going down the line here. The Confederates uh, are going to just keep shifting their actual shooting troops forward, and the Union troops are going to try and hit, keep hitting them as well with the fire. Yeah, they can reset up their lines here, and then they could then. Um, Maybe fire on the units that are like shooting a dub, but it looks like they're also being shot by a uh, friendly fire here. These said uh, men with no ammunition, they need to be careful. But if the Union force is going to retreat, they need to retreat across the entire line, otherwise, they'll just get units isolated like this. Um, and they need to retreat to the same, to like the next line of defense, which is here, which is going to be much harder to take, I feel like. A lot of open ground, but they can use, can the Confederates, the, um, the initial trench line, that first trench line, to try and maybe take some cover, maybe you know, just like sneak up units a little bit closer. Yes, I can hear Indian war cries. Oh, it's the Indian troops going into melee. I don't know if that's, that's a bit strange, okay. Yeah, that has not worked for the Union forces. It's, it works a bit more over here though. They've been successful here riding troops. But I think that might be more than uh, they, they, they can do. They definitely cannot take on multiple uh, Confederate units, I don't think. And yeah, that's going to be a routing Union unit very soon. There you go. Bit of a waste, I feel like, for the two units. That one's actually been fully routed, down to 38 men. There you go. You can see the uh, Confederates have been successful in taking that first line of defense. Pretty easy for them. No real issues there. This next bastion could be pretty hard. There's a lot of guns they've got to try and get through. Artillery and also just, just riflemen. But if they want to, they can set up infantry in front, like in some of these trench lines here, I feel like. And they could shoot over the top, I feel like, quite easily. Without damage. They're already opening up, and their own troops aren't back yet. Like, come on, guys, careful. Careful. There's got friends down there, buddy. Oh, they haven't actually shot a single one of these guys. 150 out of 150. How they haven't been killed, I do not know. Yeah, hold your fire, boys. There's friendlies down there. Gosh. Blue on blue. Quite literally. Boys in blue shoot their own men. Yeah, it looks like most of these uh, Union units are going to get back pretty much themselves. But now look at this, yeah. Veterans can use these trench lines to their own advantage. And they can fire from the safety of the trench line and then uh, and they advance. I mean, it looks like they're gonna on the right hand side. They advance hard. So they, uh, they can do that. It looks like oh no, his artillery already broken. That just been shot at. 
I don't know where that's... How that's going so quick though. That's important. Maybe it's friendly fire. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, I think it's just the small arms fire of the uh, Confederates. They're firing onto the, uh, the artillery and killing them. It's a problem I'm finding. The artillery is so vulnerable. Um, they should actually retreat, I think. I mean, they're a little late now. I think they will die. I just think artillery is a little bit vulnerable. It's very OP, but it is very vulnerable. So I guess maybe it works out quite nicely. The crews are very vulnerable, I feel like. That's why you need to have the artillery like, more in the back like this. Then it's, uh, then it's nice and safe. We've got multiple batteries back here. Still some Union forces rushing back quickly. And the Confederates keep coming forward. It's like a zombie horde almost of just like, yeah, guys are melee. They're just like, you're gonna have to be stopped somehow. Fire, fire at will, send these guns. Confederates packing. Down the level. There you go. Artillery again getting taken out. Taken out. It'd be nice to keep these guys. The cannons they can do the damage they can do would be incredible. They're earning so many. They've earned another Chevron with this one before it routes. This one might live a little longer. It's already firing canister already? Okay, I'm intrigued to see. Another artillery piece coming up. Put the battery a little closer, but here we go, the Confederates are getting very close again. I think these other units are going to melee. They found a gap in the line. Here they go, fellas. Kill every last damn Union boy you find, every damn last Yankee. There you go, Confederates broke pretty quickly there. Union forces are uh, doing the same here, routing with multiple Confederate units. What a red body going off, brutal volleys there, last minute. Doing so much damage to the Confederates. And another Confederate unit, it looks like it's going to be forced back. Actually, it's going to try to take the trench line. It might do. It's a bit close. So the, uh, I guess it's a, it's a little a little bit stronghold, but they are getting focused down quite hard here. Union forces, I feel like, have successfully held off that first wave across most of the line. The veterans on the left are a little bit slower to arrive, but uh, they are still uh, on their way. Yeah, the Union forces are routing most of the veterans here. You see more Confederate, uh, more Union troops have sucked into the melee fight. Breaking going on along the line. Get to see any sort of Union units break apart from the artillery. Oh, there we go. The first infantry unit breaks. That is a hole in the line opening up there. The Confederates will take advantage. There are Union units in behind. They're waiting patiently. There's a couple of other spots here that are starting to waver. The first sort of line of the trenches is slowly getting overwhelmed here by Confederates. This is looking a little dangerous. That is for sure. Artillery now firing like canister shots into all of this uh, infantry here, doing some serious damage. Breaking another unit there, but I imagine the artillery is going to get silenced here with the uh, Confederate charge. Ah, it's unfortunate. They did such a good job. They had literally one unit I think, to fire onto, just like just to melee these guys. Fine. This little corner over here, this portion's holding on quite nicely. And uh, I don't know, the artillery is actually holding. Well, I say that as a red line. They might get routed here. Yeah, there you go. Union troops come in. And then the uh, artillery routes me with a rear charge. Look at this massive routing now going along this line here. That looks more like from a line fight than anything. A melee fight is not a lot of place there. And the Union force is minding to shift down a lot of troops here because a lot of reserves being kept over here. I mean, we've got a 500 man unit here. Oh boy, this is like our only large unit, I think, really. 
Yeah, most of us are like 150, 125. That's a big, big unit, 500. That might need to come forward and do some work on the front lines. There's also a barricade line here held up the baggage. That could be used as a, sort of like a, a final line of defense. Or the tree line could be useful, but here we go. That final sort of corner is now being assaulted by the Confederates. Forces overwhelmed. The guns are also going to get overwhelmed here and routed. There you go. Looks like the uh, Union forces here slowly getting out of melee. I don't know if anyone's really better in melee. Like if the Union forces are better than the uh, Confederate or vice versa. But uh, pretty good. I like the Confederates win more melee fights than uh, the Union forces, typically. Stab them up, boys. Stab them up. They are sending some of these, uh, these damn rebels back in, which is good to see. They're sort of holding out on his leg. Left is actually, yeah, it's looking okay for now. It's still short of men, short of reserves. They need some of these, uh, these troops to start returning, which they are, which is good. But it's the same for the Confederates as well, all these troops that are returning. So, yeah, all, all very concerning. I mean, look at this. I mean, these two sides are fighting right next to each other, but unaware of each other's existence, I guess. The artillery here pounding away. I guess the infantry here has to hide to avoid being smoked by the artillery. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. We have a melee going on. Oh, it's the uh, Union forces going in. The artillery has been routed. They go. Like uh, that's 175 man unit, that's doing okay. And that definitely got shot on the flank there. It's, it's severely wounded. I might get routed. There you go, that is gone. It seems like the Union lines kind of been reformed a little further back. They have moved that large unit along. I feel like they definitely could do moving some of these other units here as well. Shift them back along. So yeah, the Confederates are not there. Move some of these guys along. Whether they're microing elsewhere, which is potential, but. We need to reform up on the next trench line and try and hold that. Yeah, artillery's still going off. I mean, there's artillery there blowing up. I mean, it's a better artillery. Your men have been routed, artillery. sir. Yeah, more men getting broken everywhere. To be honest, both sides, big melee fights still going on over here. I mean, the Confederates leaving their generals really far back. They probably should bring this forward for morale. Whether they just forgot about them, I don't know. But they're just keeping them in reserve. Like, setting one general up at a time. Might be the case. Yeah, Union forces are still getting overwhelmed. They are sort of reformed around the houses and the buildings here, but the Confederates are starting to make some ground, and they're starting to get some chevrons as well. Now the new line of defense on the right. Weary, yeah, with the trenches, the Confederates can kind of preserve some of their losses. Whether they can start the flank, yeah, you can see these units here start out and they'll be activated a little bit more. They need to start being activated. Can they flank around the Confederates? And start to do some, uh, some work on the flank here. And we sort of swing back the Confederate left, uh, the Union right. That would be very, very useful. Because they need the help. Wow, 
Melee, melee, that's pretty brutal for the, uh, for the Union forces there. The guns are very much uh, in danger. There's two out of the four left. There's some serious danger. Probably getting shot up by small arms fire. The left now seems like it's the most strained out of all the forces. There's a lot of troops here that re rallied. Um, I think they just have been forgotten about. I mean, usually it's 2 to 2 this one. Players, I think, uh, are being overwhelmed with it by the sheer number of men they have. And it looks like we're going to see the Confederates to get around the next General here getting shot in the flank. This is a big win if they take this guy out. There you go, that's the Union General gone. If they get shit another volley off, they might be able to kill him. I don't know. I don't think they did. Oh, somebody's slipping going off here, they're doing some damage. It's costing the Confederates a lot of troops though, every single assault. Like multiple units here are like waving and rounding. Here we go, look, this is what I'm saying, the right flank. I fire in advance, but I was there, keep firing in advance. And yeah, the Confederates now bringing it to play large you units. We've got a 275 man unit here that just appeared from somewhere. Um, and we've still got a big 500 man unit that's just going in. It needs, I think, going over in the center here. All these guys down. This general is very much open, you can just get charged. We've got some reserves here as well that probably can go in. Better just firing the flanks of the Union troops there. The center is about to give way. Of course, it's what they do best, and they go into melee. It's not really what they do best at all, but it's, what, it's the best response, to be honest. It's the safest response. Better it's yeah, re rally on this right looks really bad for the, uh, for the Union forces. I think the Confederates are the strongest here, and it's probably where they're the weakest. They're, they're certainly the most scattered. I think this is looking the best at the moment for the, uh, for the Union forces on their right. If you just hold on the left, just keep them in a shoot and match, they might be okay. Keep them in a shoot and match around somewhere around the town here, they'll be okay. The artillery in the center is just broken. I think that might be some of the last artillery to go with one more battery here. And there's the one way off in the distance over there. That's uh, I think all that remains. Here we go. The 500 man units coming up. Here we go. In it goes. This tight of the unit. I have a feeling there's going to be like militia, so I doubt it's going to do that great. Alive for now. Surely this Confederate, uh, this Union unit here, firing the side of the Confederates can do a lot of damage, I thought. Some good side shots there. Maybe the, maybe the barricade, maybe the barricades do more damage to the uh, Union forces. I don't really know. But yeah, certainly over here, this is looking a little messy right now. Lots of uh, flanks being created by the Union forces here. They're actually using the size of multiple better units wherever they set up. Generals will also come up now to the uh, reserve ones for the Confederates. Maybe they need to pump that morale a little bit higher. One last push. This is a good idea here to try and get rid of the big five behind here. Side shots to try and really winning down those numbers. Getting this uh, Union, uh, sorry, this Confederate unit here to orange line and then red line you can see here. And if they can break one of them, it might start, start a chain reaction. The Union of course is setting a man into melee. I don't know if that's really a smart idea. They have pushed back up on this flank here. Weary, I don't know if they can really afford to do this either. But maybe it's to try and keep these uh, Confederate troops tied down. But this is seeming like the best spot for the Confederates right now. 
I just like to see a Union win. I don't think we actually seen the Union win any of these song battles for right today. Fire when ready! Kill every last one of these damn... There you go, doing that bit. Yeah, 200 man unit here is doing absolute work. Your men have been routed, sir! They are breaking through again, this, again. The Union left, Confederate right, looking very good for the Confederates. A bit of a throwaway, just throw away these units and send them into melee. Just try and hold on to a gunfight. Confederates, I don't think, can do as, won't do as great, and that's all it's easy. The huge unit is uh, exhausted, 412 left of its troops. Again, looks like, look at this, you need forces like really concentrated in the center. It's almost like they're giving up that left hand side. Where they think one last hurrah can like break through, I don't know. The flank of it seems stabilized a bit. Also there's just like a stack of troops. I've got to get them uh, throw the line down up I think just to get that extra sort of like width. Whether they can side charge here these days, uh, I don't know, but. I'd side charge this unit to try and help break it. Battles in the forest taking place. More Union forces being broken. The Yankees just don't know how to fight. A general coming in now, he's coming to support. What well, a legendary move by the general here. Sacrifice his life. So there you go, generals die. We've got Brigadier James Rayleigh dying, that is uh, not a good sign. One of the Union generals gone. Yeah, it does look like slowly but surely now the Confederates are starting to turn around. I honestly feel the Union forces might have had it. Your men have been when they uh, when they saw this, this flank over here. And, I mean, they also bring in a lot of Confederate units there. And this Titan unit is still going strong. 66-man units on 500 left. Well, 500 to 360 left. They've tried their hardest there. They've tried their hardest. It's not like it's going to be enough though. We'll see. We've got to have a, big, a bit of a twist. We'll see. The left is fully gone for the Union forces now. It's all just shattered. The Confederate right's going to be able to swing in. Hit the centre here which is already uh, looking like it could crumble. Redlining. A little bit. I mean, these are 49 man units, they're not pig units. I guess they weren't ever to start with the uh, unit size, this one's a lot smaller. Look at this, a lot of Confederates are breaking. So, I mean, the Confederate left could have just as bad as the Union left. The 
these two units here could definitely be free. I mean, there shouldn't be any reserves, I feel like, with the Union forces. They need everything in the front line shooting at something. Another general has died, Nathan Kimball has died. That is a, uh, another Union general dead. Super shot by artillery. There's another general here alive. I mean, I don't know who's artillery. Maybe friendly fire? It must be friendly fire, because that was explosions around the body. The R3 could be quite hit, so I think it would be friendly fire, unfortunately. That's causing quite a lot of units to break here in the center. As they turn to, uh, some Union units to turn and base, create that new left flank. The uh, ginormous unit has one. It's very tight, it needs a bit of rest, to be honest. It looks like it's going to get sent to the left hand side to try and tie down there. Maybe it's not over yet for the Union. Maybe they can turn it around. They're going to need to kill a couple of Confederate units uh, general soon. And there you go. As I said, Stuart has died. He's been shot by an artillery piece there. So that's, I think, two. I think there's two generals dead. Um, well, one general dead for the Confederates. Another one routed. And then I think uh, certainly the Union have lost at least two themselves. Kind of losing count a little bit. Multiple generals have died on either side, all being routed. Here we go, it looks like the uh, Union Force is sort of redeploying now. Your men have been routed, sir. Doing the cannon. Is that another general routed? It is, another general has routed here. And the Confederates, that is not good. They have another one on the front lines here. We need some jab. And I, are we going to see the Union uh, sort of win this one? I don't know. It's so close. If they can get troops over here to sort of support this lead. And it's going to be needed, like there's three units here. They're not going to hold that otherwise. It's a big ass unit needs to get there and start to uh, charge it. Hold him down. It's tired. If he gets us all like fresh or active, it should be fine. Fire when ready boys, fire when ready. Yes sir. For the Union. The Union is hitting another break for the Union. It's just as I thought they might turn around, they also start to break. A general there has returned. Artillery here might be needed. It might need to start firing the things in front of it. And look at that, the Confederates got a gap through the center. And they're coming after the big unit. 300 to the left. So a uh, 119 right here. There you go, the Confederates with a daring move. But like they are not going to pull off because like they are going to get around here. It does look like this might be the death of the, uh, the Union forces here. A general in behind, by the way. Six man squad is going in deep into enemy lines. I really thought the Union might be able to revive it when that, that right flank is like, look like it's doing well. I get more Indian war cries going, like Navy Indian war cries going off. Oh, it's the general going in. That's hilarious. There you go. I think the Union general's uh, broken, so it's the Confederate one. That is actually hilarious. Well done, both guys. Well done, team. Achieved so much there, but it doesn't like the Battle of Franklin. It's going to be changed here. The history is going to change. Looks like it's a better victory. As they take this this hill defense impressively, to be honest. I mean, the first line, I feel like it could have held out a little longer there. Could the, uh, could the Union forces. I feel like they could have held in melee 
against Zolt while shooting. Like, poke back range as well at them. I feel like they could have definitely done some more damage. This would have just allowed this sort of, like, first line, uh, second line of defense to bombard the Confederates a little longer. So I feel like the cannons just didn't get used enough. Uh, especially with when one side had them and the other side didn't. And, like, cannons are so useful in ACW. They really, really are. So it was a fun one. I've enjoyed it. It's a very cool fun mechanic. Though. It's an amazing match. Glorious volley, boys. Glorious volley. There you go, the big ginormous who's broken at 263 uh, three men, nearly at half strength. <laughs> Confederate from off for a few more years. Hands are getting routed. And it's all over. But the general's died, though. Patrick Clit Cleburne. Oh, he's over here. He's like general of the charge since against the cannons. He's died for his his sins. We also have some um, some units over here that have managed to get routed by the artillery that's firing point blank range across the river at them. Yes, sir. And they failed to actually kill any of the crew yet. So good on the artillery there, doing some work. Still getting some wins for the, uh, for the Union side. Hurrah, boys! One last hurrah! Into melee we go. Oh, the general has rallied. Yeah, he's well. Oh, he's just got a shot. There you go, St David Stanley. Just getting shot in the back there by Confederate troops to go over there, and that's I think going to be the uh, routing uh, route of the uh, Union forces there. I think I'm just going to make a cut so you guys don't have to see the mopping up of Union forces. I think we can take a, a hot moment. But there you go, the Battle of Franklin. Pretty much over. We'll uh, go to the end result. I might. Uh, I'll have the uh, end result to look at. Um, so you can look at those. I'll see you guys in one moment. Okay, so yeah, it didn't take too much longer. Uh, I think it's just really that artillery piece that just needed a routing uh, and took a little moment to do. But yeah, there we go. Uh, Hood has, has, has changed history. He's managed to win today's battle against uh, his uh, rival, John Schofield. Um, so yeah, a pretty large one. Uh, again, sort of fairly evenly matched in sort of numbers. Uh, the Confederates actually have it a little bit more, about 8,000. Well, maybe not actually. Both sides sort, sort of have around about eight to seven, seven to 8,000 here. Fairly evenly matched, but uh, I think the Confederates just had a slight advantage. But the uh, Union Force definitely had uh, the defences, and he could have, uh, could have, and maybe should have turned that one around. Both sides getting some pretty good kills. Um, I think we're looking at it from um, from Hood's perspective, but I have no real clue. Um, and we got some good kills: 170, 137, 133 with some of these units here, 132, 126. Yeah, some good kills. I mean, some of these units had no ammunition, I think, so they just got sent into the meat grinder and just expected to just go and like get some sort of kills. But yeah, there you go. Uh, all the kills you want to look at them. I mean, like, yeah, look, five generals in this one army. It shows, like, the amount of generals you get um, in ACW is insane. But there you go, guys. That is the Battle of Franklin. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment show your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. If you haven't already checked out uh, any of the other ACW videos, I definitely recommend doing that because those are those. some of those are amazing. But until next time, guys, bye for now.